morning, good morning. This is Shit Mac here, and today we're going to be talking about aerodynamics and fluid dynamics affecting hovering flight. So this is going to be applicable to all rotor craft, but uh, as usual, we're going to be using the Hype Performance H145 in Microsoft Flight Simulator to view this. Alright, so what we have here is an airfoil. This is the side profile of a rotor blade. Now imagine we're sitting on the ground, flat pitch, rotor blades are turning. So this blade is moving from right to left through the air. Now the blade can't tell the difference between it moving through the air or the air flowing over it. So we call this relative wind because it's just relative to the blade. Specifically, this is called rotational relative wind because it is relative wind due to the rotation of the blades. We only care from an aerodynamic perspective what the blade is doing relative to the wind or what the wind is doing relative to the blades. Now, as this wind flows around this airfoil, there is drag that is created all along the surface of the profile of this blade and then additional drag that is created by the vortices that are shed off the back side of the blade creating a suction on the back of the blade here now we call this profile drag because it exists all along the profile of the blade okay that profile drag is not affected by anything other than the speed of the blade moving through the air. So when we pull pitch, that drag still exists in the same form that it was before, acting at the same angle, all right? But it is very, very small in comparison to the other forces. So almost negligible, but it does exist. It always acts in parallel to the cord line of the blade, which is a uh, line drawn uh, through the middle of your airfoil. All right, so if we imagine that this is the exact moment that we have pulled pitch, but it has not started to affect the air. So right now the blade is still traveling this direction and relative wind is composed entirely of rotational relative wind, which is parallel to the motion of the blade. There's two angles that are of critical importance. The first one is the angle of incidence. This is the angle formed between the direction of the, that the blade is traveling and the cord line of the blade. The second angle, which is of more importance, is the angle of attack. This is the angle formed between the relative wind and the cord line of the blade. All right, so let's say we've picked this thing up to a hover, and after some time, we've allowed the aircraft to stabilize, and the uh, aerodynamic flow has stabilized. There is now a vertical component of wind flowing downward through the rotor system called induced flow or downwash. This component of relative wind is not actual motion of the air. However, this is the actual flow downward of the air. This is now the relative wind seen by the rotor blade as a combination of rotational relative wind and induced flow. All right, so this is now our actual relative wind. So as air flows downward through the rotor system, this acts to reduce our angle of attack. All right, now lift is always produced perpendicular to the relative wind. So this is our lift that is generated by the relative wind flowing over this rotor blade all right now perpendicular to the direction of the blade is the vertical component of lift so this is what actually lifts the helicopter all right now you can see that there's a there's a part missing right here this part that is missing is called induced drag all right because this is drag that is, that is induced by the vector component of lift being canted back away from the um, 
uh, canted after the vertical by the same angle as the difference between the relative wind being inclined from the direction of the blade's movement, the actual motion of the blade. So this angle will be the same as this angle. All right, so this acts to slow down the rotor system. This acts to lift up the aircraft, but this will act to slow down the rotor system. These two drag components right here, and this is not to scale. I should have made this a lot smaller over here. Uh, these two right here act to slow the rotor system down because a the vertical component of this is absorbed by this and then the horizontal component of this combines with the horizontal component of this drag right here and acts to slow down the rotor system. Now we counter this, or actually the computers counter this, by adding more power from the engines. So what we see here is torque. This is going to account for the torque that is required to keep the aircraft, or to keep the rotor system spinning at the same speed. Okay, so there are certain flight profiles that will actually cause the induced flow to increase, which decreases the angle of attack, further inclines the total relative wind from the rotational relative wind, the actual vector motion of the blade, which leans our resultant lift vector aft more reduces the vertical component of lift and increases the horizontal component of lift, which we call induced drag. All right, so here we are back inside of the simulator and I have the CFD active so that we can see the wind. And there you can see the induced flow coming down through the rotor system. And as we talked about before, this is going to decrease the angle of attack, which will cant the total lift vector backwards decreasing the vertical lift component and increasing the induced drag. Additionally, we have the circular flow where the downwash is re-ingested back into the rotor system, uh, causing the blades to fly in turbulence, further degrading the lift capability. Now notice as we get closer to the ground, first off, that air is jetted out and away from the aircraft, which causes those rotor tip vortices to actually be reduced slightly. All right. Additionally, the air piles up up underneath the aircraft, causing a high pressure zone under the aircraft that back pressures the downflow and slows down that induced flow. Now, this slowing of the velocity the induced flow flattens out the angle of attack, which cants forward your total lift vector, causing an increase in the vertical component of the lift vector and a reduction in the induced drag. Okay, As we lift back up, again, the air becomes vertical. And as we come back down, that air slows down and you see it start to jet out and away from the aircraft. All right, this is what's known as ground effect. So here we're in ground effect and now we are out of ground effect. And there you can see that air really straighten out and those rotor tip vortices become very elongated as those vortices become more turbulent and greatly diminish the uh, lift capability of the aircraft. So this is why when we're down in ground effect, the aircraft requires significantly less power to sustain a hover because we have a larger vertical component of the lift vector, we have a higher angle of attack, and we have a smaller induced drag component of the blades. And then as we climb out of in ground effect, suddenly the blades have to work much harder to climb through the air that is descending through the rotor disc. And those rotor tip vortices uh, become much more pronounced. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, any of this information can be found 
in the FAA helicopter flying book which is available on the FAA website I highly recommend it I am going to be uh, going through it from front to back slowly over time uh, so if you are patient and you prefer watching videos then uh, like and subscribe this and I'll keep putting it out as time allows and all that stuff uh, I got some other videos that uh, are fun to watch um, not necessarily a tutorial series, but interesting uh, nonetheless. And also, uh, definitely if you have not bought the Hype Performance Group H145, swing on over there and get that. Uh, you can Google it. It's easy to find. Dave makes an amazing product, and I highly recommend it.